G'day, I'm Josh Keegan, and this is The Space Down Under. On the 4th of September 2021, I did a live stream with Jackie Carpenter, one of the founders of One Giant Leap Australia, and I found out all about the magnificent work she is doing for students based across Australia to get them excited about careers, not only in STEM, but in the Australian space industry. Some of these projects she is working on have involved sending and returning wattle seeds to the International Space Station, the Kibo Robot Programming Challenge, an educational program which students solve various problems by programming free-flying robots, Astrobe and Interpol, on orbit on the International Space Station. The International Spacecraft Exploration Challenge, this involves students working as part of a mission team to not only design spacecraft, navigate to another planet, land their vehicle and build a planetary habitat, and explore a new planet to find resources in order to sustain human life. Students were able to learn from subject matter experts, including astronauts, scientists, and engineers who are directly involved in ongoing missions as they compete with other teams for the best mission design. In November, 2021, not even two months later, Jackie had some more news to talk about, and I thought this would be an opportunity to find out more about what's happening behind the scenes of One Giant Leap Australia. As always, I love to include everything in my interviews, so I've placed some timestamps in the description below if you want to skip ahead and get to those bits you really want to see. Remember, now's the time to hit that subscribe button. You've got to smack that subscribe button like you would if your rocket has wanted off nominal and it needs to be brought down before it hurts anyone. It's that time. Grab yourself a cup of coffee or at least your favorite beverage and let's get started. That was because we did a seed planting ceremony with the uh, Consul General of Japan in Melbourne. Oh, okay. Which is an offshoot from the um, Australian Embassy in Tokyo, again, are growing the space wattle seeds, and then they're going to, when they're big enough, gift them to the imperial family. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a, a very big deal. Um and and they're um, actually being germinated in the Australian Embassy right now, so they're part of the growth experiment, and um, and yeah, so it's pretty big. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you really just talk. It felt like we talked about this not long ago. Um, I mean, I know it's big, been a big project for you and everything like that, and it's something you've been working on in, in background. But, yeah, it feels like it was only a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about how they come back and now you're getting congratulations and, and speeches from the Sochi Noguchi who's been on the International Space Station. Wow. Things are really it's going well so, for you. Yeah, but Sochi um, is actually a fr friends with one of my friends, um, NASA flight director Ed Van Sice. And I do know um, Ed's trying to catch up with Sochi to give him a mission patch because we, we do have seeds in space mission patches um, that we are selling to schools if their kids want them. But um, more than that, to have something as a memento around being part of the team to grow stuff. So yeah, we um, it's it was a, a wonderful experience being with the um, Consul General of Japan in Melbourne. Because of lockdown, he hadn't been able to go anywhere so it was the first schools he had visited since he arrived in Australia and um, and his wife came too. So it was, oh, wow. and also Victorian Education Department people and representatives from the space agency. So it was a really, really big deal. But then as a surprise, they had gotten Soichi to say messages like, um, the seeds I had with me in space are the seeds that you have. I can guarantee that just so <laughs> that the kids knew that they were. And um, and then a special shout out to us, which was amazing. We feel very honoured to have been mentioned in that way. Yeah, I know that that was the really big thing as well as that. Um, yeah, to also to a big thank you to One Giant Leap Foundation Australia. Um, yeah, that was that was massive. I kind of watched that and went, oh, <laughs> that was huge. <laughs> I was like, well done, to you. 
imagine sitting there like you've got a 3-4 class, you've got the school principal, you've got the consul general, you've got a photographer, all these people, and I'm sitting there trying to keep a straight face where really I just wanted to go, yeah, you know. <laughs> you should have. You should have. You should have celebrated the moment in your own unique way and just gone, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> would have scared uh, the kids. Coffee the primary school the Minasan. Konnichiwa. Hello, dear students at the Caulfield Primary School. This is astronaut Soichi Noguchi. Last August, we received about 50 grams of golden water seeds from the former Australian ambassador to Japan, Mr. Richard Court. What would happen if we take these golden water seeds into space? In order to answer this honest question, the Golden Water Seas were launched to the International Space Station, also known as ISS. I spent six months on ISS alongside the Golden Water Seas and returned to Earth this year. The seas you planted today were definitely the ones I had on the ISS and returned safely from space. I hope this Golden Water will grow safe and sound. Please share this wonderful story with your family, friends, and loved ones. And ask them, do you know what happened to a golden water seed after it traveled to space? Last but not least, I would like to thank One Giant Leap Australia Foundation for their generous support for the Asian Hub in Space project. I would also like to thank the school staff, local educators, the Australian Space Agency, and the Council General of Japan in Melbourne, Mr. Shimada, for organizing this seed planting event today. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita. What else is happening? Well, for a couple of years, we'd been quietly working on a project that I called the Connecting Minds Project. And um, it started with us pretty much talking with the Australia Arab Council. There was a grant out at the time and we applied for the grant and then everything got thrown out the window with COVID. And the idea is and um, to connect teachers from Australia with teachers from around the world and do space STEM projects together. So oh, wow. that was the idea because with the things I know and my background and, yep. um, I mean, I've been doing this stuff since 2006 um, and, and then 30 years in the classroom stuff. Um, often the, every school is resourced differently. Every teacher is at a different level. Some people are very confident, some lack confidence. Some people want to try something new. Other people just want to keep down that well-trodden road, you know. Yeah. So um, it's all very different and all systems are different, like all the different education systems, every state and territory is different. So to me, the easy way to connect people is just put them together and get them talking. Yeah. And, um, and then say, not having an expected outcome, but having some very clear um, project outcomes that you want, like to inspire each other, to create programs other people can use. Mm. So I'd been, um, I submitted this uh, proposal and because of COVID, it, it, and it wasn't just us, it's like in whole, in general, the whole grant round got canned. Yep. Then um, we got contacted and asked, could you put something in but eliminate any international travel and things like that. So we went, sure, because I really love this idea. So we put in a proposal to link four schools from Australia with, uh, sorry, five schools from Australia with five schools from the United Arab Emirates and yep. showcase it at the Dubai Expo, which, yep. um, I mean, my experience of Expo was Brisbane, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 1988. Half the people listening weren't born then. Um, yeah, exactly. you know, and, and I can still remember the holographic Indigenous person and the fire. Like I was just so proud it was Australia. And, yeah. and, um, and it, it was funny because how old I was then, 
we had saved up and my parents had never, ever left New South Wales and we bought them plane tickets to go to Brisbane oh, wow. and we bought them expo tickets and it was the highlight to my parents' life. So yeah. then with Dubai Expo, and I know um, the whole expo um site is massive it's got its own train station and all these things there's 192 pavilions like it's massive and um i thought well how cool would it be just to chug along to there and show some projects off you know yeah so um the australian um arab council goes well this is a pretty cool idea we'll kind of help you out and um, we'll give you a bit of a grant. So oh, that wow. grant didn't include um, any, anything like wages or, or any of that stuff, more about um, trying to get the media together to showcase virtually what the kids and the teachers were doing. So um, we were really excited then. That was like great, but we got told that in October I yep. think the middle or late October was when we got told and then we couldn't say anything until last week. So, um, so I know, look at your face, it's hilarious. Wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my, so, my face, that's a short timeline. That's yeah, a ridiculously but, short timeline. <laughs> uh, I mean, we have an amazing network of yep. teachers, amazing. Like just on the Waddle program, we have 300 schools, right? So you mm. just put the word out and go, who's mad? Who's crazy enough to do this? Um, who's interested in doing this? And then on the other side to that, I have long-term relationships with people in the UAE because I have been there. I've met with the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Centre. I've met with the um, UAE Space Agency and Austrade helped me with those connections. So it was just joining the dots really. Wow. And then, um, But the hard thing was we had said in our proposal we could the latest we would could start this was August. Yeah. <laughs> right. So come October, it was like, sure, we can achieve the impossible. It's not a worry. Who do we know? So um, and it's people who have worked with us before on other projects, um, not necessarily Wattle, there's Basil experiment that we're yep. doing as well, and all these other things. So I have five amazing teachers who are all in New South Wales, and if you think about it, they've only mm. just gone back to school after lockdown. Yeah, exactly. And they've got school reports to write. Okay, so you think about this. They're all <laughs> shutting <laughs> down. Like, do you know what I mean? And these yeah, and people you're, you're are gonna, you're, gonna lie, you're gonna take them overseas now. You can interrupt the, those those vital reports that happen at the end I of the wish, year. <laughs> I, I really wish I could. I wish I could yeah. take the kids because it it's a life changing thing, yeah, right? Be, yeah. And that's what we. One Giant Leap Australia Foundation was built for that, life-changing opportunities. So Enrico's a great supporter, so he's um, going to chat to everyone about the future of Australian space and things. And then on the 6th of December, we think we have um, Her Excellency Sarah Bint Al-Amiri, who is the chairwoman of the UAE Space Agency, talking to everybody. So... Um, <laughs> What? Wow, just drop a few names, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So we're, we're putting a request for her. Yep. Um, it's just amazing. The people in the UAE and the space stuff over there is just amazing. You've got to remember they did the HOPE mission and nailed it. Yeah. They're the yeah, most yeah, exactly. intelligent, amazing, visionary people that I've ever met. And um, 
And what's cool about it is they understand we need to inspire the next generation. Yeah. So working with them um, is just amazing. So you put it all together, mm-hmm. pull in my network, and all of a sudden these kids are meeting the leaders of the space sectors. And then, wow. and then top it off with I have a media guy who's pulling all the videos and photos and that together. And on the 11th of January... Um, the Department of Foreign Affairs, um, the Expo, the Dubai Expo people. Yep. Um, we have a room called the Wattle Room of all things, the Wattle Room. Um, oh, nice, 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 okay. nice. That, that's nice. <laughs> you got it, right? So yeah, the I Wattle got it. Room is the name of the room um, in the Blue Sky Dreaming Pavilion at Expo that's the Australian Pavilion. Um, yep. So in the Wattle Room, we'll be there from 10 till 2. And we're going to showcase these projects with the kids. But we're going to have all the UAE kids and their teachers in the Blue Sky Dreaming Pavilion. So they'll get a, a special tour. We'll have the characters um, from Expo. We'll ha- obviously have people there visiting and um, interested in, in what the project is. But we also will have everyone virtually from here. So I've already seen emails going out from schools going, we want as many years, three, four kids <laughs> here at our school on this day. And it's the holidays. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. So, um, you know, it's just amazing when everyone just rows in the one direction and um, and does all of and do and we do with those things. So we already have a wait list of schools who want to yep. join in next time. Um, my aim is to try and do some IAC stuff. Maybe we can get them to IAC in in Paris. That could be good. Wow. Yeah, that would be really good. And there's some discussions about Milan. So, um, you know, who knows? We don't know. It can end up anywhere, you know. Yeah, exactly. So um, I've got a question um, that that as you were talking, uh, it popped into my head. What are some of the um, uh, project or the program outcomes you're looking to achieve during the time at the Expo? Well, at Expo, I just... um, I would love people to just come and have a look yep. and see what kids can achieve and teachers. Like in this time period, we've got, I know that there's 3D printing happening and robotics and all this mm. stuff. I, and I know that everyone's pulling it together virtually. So I think, um, you know, with the outcomes that have been there, I would love to meet up with anybody who, who might want to have a chat to us about doing cross-country um, collaborations, we already are um, in discussions about expanding the seeds in space stuff with other countries. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, um, in space. We're already in discussions. We have someone in country in America, so we're in discussions there. We've, we've gotten through the whole biosecurity thing, so we're going to have space water being grown in California in a few places. Wow. And then we're going to also, we've been talking to India about growing some stuff at, in Ladakh at the Mars Analog in Ladakh so, and also Brazil. So, um, and there's conversations going on. So our aim is, um, is to, when we're at Expo, there's every country has a pavilion. Mm. So anyone from any of those countries who's at expo um email me at one giant leap at bigpond.com and let's go for coffee really yeah um, you know and i'm sure that we could invite you to the australian pavilion i am going to take some boomerangs but i don't intend on throwing them because i'm a bit worried there's not enough room but, um, <laughs> and clip on koalas i put my big order in yeah. like i um my local guy that i buy those from so um i my aim is to expand yep. what we're doing and, I, and a sneaky thing um, I should tell you, Josh. Sure. Don't tell anyone else, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, is it looks like we're going to link up with someone and do some STEAM education stuff around music, space and art. Oh, wow. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's brilliant. Okay. Yes, so more, 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 more. Tell, tell, tell. Come on. That introduction came in over LinkedIn yep. and um, you might want to look up Moon Symphony Space Week um, and we've already been talking about what we potentially 
could do globally with that. Wow. And it's yeah. certainly looking like it, things are on the up and up for you, Jackie, and One Giant Leap Australia. It's certainly get going, you're going from strength to strength to strength to strength, and it's just, it's just amazing to watch. Just remember, there's some people back here in Australia who would like exclusives and stuff like that. Or you, I, I can fit in a suitcase. I'm, I'm only six foot three. <laughs> <laughs> so if you suddenly get a really heavy suitcase, it could be me in there. We are going to be over there for, a fa for a, a, yep. at least a few weeks. Yeah, um, okay. and, and very seriously, if anyone is going to be there or wants to talk to us about how they can be involved in these things, we try to keep the price point as low as we possibly can but deliver the highest quality we can to kids yep. around the world. Um, we're all about equity and also about tolerance and diversity because without diversity, there's no innovation. Yeah, correct. That's, right? That's exactly how it works. Yeah, and, and so with us, um, the Gadget Girls, for example, is the mm. program that we run, but we also have the support crew, which is all the guys. So we have the Gadget Girls support crew, which is all the boys, um, and oh, because cool. then they're all included. Yeah. Because cool. it's all right, because they want to show that they want to support girls to be the best they can be. Um, so you have to give them that opportunity. So it's the same thing here. It's not all female teachers. It's male teachers and female students. But this will expand out into other areas. As we've found with the Waddle program, yep. um, there's a number of programs um, that have come out of that one program. And one that comes to mind is Wattle Rocks, which was on Wattle Day, which is hardly ever celebrated in schools, but I think next year it will be a big thing. Um, Wattle Day is the 1st of September. And because all the kids are in lockdown, um, a teacher and a teacher's aide in Victoria decided that they would paint wattle on rocks oh, wow. and put them and hide them in the community. So they put where's Wally and some wattle on a rock or an astronaut paint them on the rocks and they hid them in the community. Then all the kids got dressed up in green and gold and they had a, a virtual gathering class meeting and then they sent them out into the community and they had to find the wattle rocks. So they called the program Water Rocks. I thought, how cool is that? <laughs> oh, that is cool. That is really, really cool. There are some really innovative people out there. That's amazing. And, but that's what's coming out of, if you can imagine there's 300 litres yeah. with those kits, and out of that it's going to be at least five programs each that they'll come up with, whether it's writing, um, experiments, art, maths, yeah. and so all of that will be shared with everyone and the same thing is going to happen with the connecting minds project what will happen from these 10 schools is five projects will come out yep. and we'll put it together and um, put outcomes to it and then they'll be up on our website for people to have a look at okay. and um, right now we haven't because we haven't been able to um, make the announcement um, the connecting minds project is actually just kind of quietly hidden on our one giant leap foundation.com.au website well um, not anymore once this goes public <laughs> so <laughs> because i'll as we all know i'll put links and everything down below um yeah. in the comments to make sure that everybody can get to it so it's not going to be quiet anymore <laughs> i'm certainly going to be shoving it from the rooftop All right <laughs> so i will try and find you some swag while i'm over there because you're going to be you awesome can, you can imagine iac and all of that's been on oh, so yeah. i'm sure that i'm sure i'll find something that's um a unique thing that i can bring back <laughs> and uh and mail up to you, you <laughs> that, that'd be absolutely yeah. awesome are you looking for more information about jackie or one giant leap australia don't worry i've got you you'll find links to everything right below including the times and dates of when you can meet up with jackie directly in dubai at expo 2020 if you like this video and you want to see more on the Southern Hemisphere's very active and ever-evolving space industry, remember to like this video, make a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Liking, making a comment, and subscribing lets YouTube know to share my channel with more people like you who love to find out more about the space down under. If you hit that notification button, it lets you know when I've uploaded a new video or when I'm about to do a live stream. These videos are supported by the kind people who are located around the world who support me on Patreon or who buy my merchandise. I like to thank each one of my patrons for the ongoing support as it allows me to continue making these videos. 
Each patron gets an exclusive insight and input into the merchandise or gets a first look at new videos or upcoming live streams. Check it out at patreon.com forward slash Josh Keegan. If Patreon is not for you, then you can still lend your support by getting your own merchandise at shop.joshkeegan.com or checking out the sponsorship page at joshkeegan.com. Thanks very much for watching The Space Down Under. And remember, stay caffeinated. <laughs>